Mm-hmm. There we go. Going live. Look that, bang on midday, just as it turned to midday. So we went live. Excellent. Good timing. Well, that's good timing. It was. Let's see if anybody joins us today. Yeah. And it's cold. Hmm. Sun's certainly not it's shining. Cold grey day. I wonder if anybody's got any snow where they are. No snow here. No snow here. No. Not in Arundel. There's still a snow warning for tomorrow. So yeah. We might get some tomorrow. We'll see. Welcome. There's a few people beginning to join us. That's good. It's always good to know we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Say hi in the comments. That, Let us know you're here. Let us know who we're who we're talking to. <laughs> talking to the void. Let's give it a little bit and then we'll get started. But, uh, Chilly. Moved rooms. It's colder in this one. It is colder in this one. Um, so. Excuse you, are we keeping mm, you up? Yeah. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, I know. Tired already. <laughs> I'm here, wasn't sure you would be. Oh, you couldn't keep us away, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, um, we thought about recording, yeah, but I think we, we, we actually ran out of time to we record everything so before, Christmas, before Christmas, so, so we decided it was easier just to do it live. So there you go. It was just um, one too many things yeah. before Christmas, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Something we could leave till after Christmas. <laughs> so. They call it Twixmas, I heard somebody recall it. Twixmas? Yeah. Oh, it's there we go. Betwixt and between, I guess. I guess so. Christmas and yeah. New Year. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Nikki. Yeah, week Welcome. when traditionally people don't know what day it is, although I think that's kind of been the last <laughs> been like months. Every day for the last six months, isn't it? Yeah, which day are we on? What um, have we got to do today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes. welcome. There's a few of you now with us, so um, we should probably make a start. We probably should. Um, yeah. So we'll start in uh, our usual way Can with... A bit closer, because my eyes are very focused. <laughs> I need the very focus. I need it in my reading range, not way over there. Thank okay. you. So we'll start with our <laughs> with our usual um, responses to one another. So please uh, join in. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and, and also, also with you. you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and, and be glad in, in it. Indeed. Brilliant. So welcome to uh, midday prayers today on the uh, 29th of December it is. and um, as has become our kind of pattern on a Tuesday we're going to some of my knee would that help <laughs> we're going to uh, start with a hymn of praise really uh, something just to help us to focus our, our our minds in a bit on on what we're thinking about and Karita has chosen this one yeah I blame you do. No, it's one that you love it's just, so just it's a, a Christmas song. That Christmas song based on Luke chapter year. 2. And so I thought, I like this one. So, we'll so go. we're going to, to read but it. Anyway. So if you want to um, quickly look it up on Google or whatever to follow along, it's uh, Thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown. In your best Essex accent. In my best Essex accent. Thank you very much. <laughs> You can start. I will. <laughs> thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found no room for thy holy nativity. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming the royal decree. Decree. <laughs> But of lowly birth camest thou, Lord, on earth, and in great humility. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The foxes found rest, and the birds their nest, in the shade of the cedar tree. But the earth was the bed for thy weary head, in the deserts of Galilee. O oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Thou camest, O Lord, with the living word, 
that should set thy people free. But with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn, they bore thee to Calvary. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, thy cross is my only plea. When, when, when heaven's arches ring and her choirs shall sing at thy coming to victory, let thy voice call me home, saying, Yet there is room, there is room at my side for thee. And my heart shall rejoice, Lord Jesus, when thou comest and callest for me. Amen. There we go. I should check these more thoroughly. <laughs> for those um, funny little words that I struggle with. Yes. Anyway, there we go. So we're going to turn to uh, our Bible uh, readings for today so we're going to be looking at psalm 96 yep. and we'll spend some time reflecting on that and then we'll move to titus chapter 2 and chapter 3 okay so i'm going to read psalm 96 and we'll start with that okay sing a new song to the lord let the whole earth sing to the lord sing to the lord praise his name each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honour and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognise the Lord. Recognise that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendour. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. Here we go. There we go. A song of a psalm of a psalm of praise, praise real praise um, to God. The context for this psalm um, did a little bit of background on this one uh, today, but the context of this psalm is is actually you find it in um, one Chronicles, the first book of Chronicles, chapter sixteen, and it's when the Ark of the Covenant is going to Jerusalem. It's going back to the to the city it's going back to its home as it were and um david kind of commissions ash asfa i think it is asaf 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 and others to um to sing basically mm. to praise god uh, and worship god and so this is really a worship song mm -hmm. and if you read one chronicles 16 you'll see it's it's a slightly fuller version there's some mm. other bits and pieces almost like there's a, a number of psalms that have been put together mm. to worship god to thank god to praise god as the ark kind of goes back into uh, jerusalem or maybe they were split up when something written were. down yeah maybe yeah yeah, yeah. No, but um, which one can first. no but mm. uh, it's just a, a a song of of praise thanking god for for uh, who he is, for what he's done, and um, just giving him honour. And it's, sorry, you going to say something? There's just this idea that um, we were in the book about it was talking about um, proclaiming and telling mm. and declaring. And they're yeah. all, mm. um, again, they're, they're, this is an active psalm. Mm. This isn't a psalm that is a kind of one that we're supposed to listen to without responding. Mm -hmm. it, it's calling yeah. God's people to to do, isn't it? It's actually the words are are quite um, powerful words and, and quite strong language. It doesn't kind of there's no wishy washy. It says sing to the Lord. It's almost like a command: sing to the Lord, publish, declare. You know, worship. They're the things that yeah. yeah we need to do. Yeah, and we were kind of saying, wasn't it? Is that that's the idea that this isn't singing. To God just because you have to no. not something that you do because this is what we do when we go to church or mm. we have to sing these songs or whatever but it's singing songs because 
um you want to it's it's about um the freedom to worship mm. to thank god to praise god just because you can not because you kind of need to um and then there's that declaring god's yeah. god's god's word and again it's about sharing not just um in conversation or dialogue or having a discussion about but it's 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 proclaiming it's it's mm. it's declaring it saying this is it this is what i believe this is what god has done for me and there's an ownership to that mm. and a strength behind that more than just wanting to to have a discussion with somebody so it's more about being willing to kind of say this is what i believe and why and this is what god has done for me mm. and so i can sing praise yeah. not out of duty but out of love and devotion for all that god has done for and me it, and and the way that the psalm is structured it talks about um my version talks about publishing God's glorious deeds and telling everyone about mm. the amazing things that he has done. And then it moves on to, oh, nations of the world recognise mm. the Lord, recognise that the Lord is glorious and strong. So it's about us telling what God is doing in order for the world to recognise mm -hmm. God. And we were just saying that actually that is important. We had a service on Sunday morning. Our Sunday service was about can we thank God for 2020? And and yes, we believe we can, although, you know, it's been a really, really tough year for many, many people. God still has done things in that year. There mm. there have been um, significant moments and there are significant moments that God has done things for us. And we need to be declaring that we need to be showing God to the world by telling our story mm. and declaring that God is still at work and what he has done so that they in turn can recognize him at work in the world. Mm. Yep. There we go. So let's have a let's have a move on to uh, Titus. Uh, I'm doing Titus. I've got to find Titus. Yeah. Here you go. So I'm looking at Titus chapter two, but we're going to start at verse eleven, and we're going to move on into um, chapter three and go down to verse eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Titus chapter two, starting at verse eleven, and it says this. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These then are things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always be gentle toward everyone. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. Well, that's a a chunky passage yeah, there. A couple um, of sermons there, Arthur. Straight after Christmas, and we're we're looking to um really to the death and resurrection, the purpose yeah. of Jesus' coming, aren't we, in these words from uh Paul. But um you know, we're reminded here of 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 Easter, yeah. of the cross and the resurrection, of the whole purpose of Jesus coming to bring salvation to all. But it starts in the stable. Yeah. It starts with the birth of a baby in Bethlehem, which is what we've just been celebrating this past week. Mm. But it leads always to the cross, mm. 
to the death of Jesus and then to his resurrection as saviour to all. And it's about understanding that the grace that is given to us, the love that comes from God is available to all. And there's there's ways of living that come from that. You know, it says say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled upright godly lives in this present age so it's saying look this is what's happening in the world yeah. around you but you're called to a different standard now as believers as sons and daughters of of god this is how you should be living and and so we're given a pattern to to uh, live by um now and also a, a pointer to what life will be like in the future when christ comes again which is what we're looking forward to um so yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a difficult passage a difficult passage to have so close to christmas i think but a reminder that christmas is a foretaste of the beginning of a journey that that god has put into a place for each of us um that leads to um this eternal salvation this eternal uh, life with him his future we were, we were saying one of the challenges is how mm. we get the message of easter into the world and the message of jesus's life into the world in the same way as christmas mm. is you know the the message that has gone out of christmas is that christmas even though it's different this year is still christmas because jesus is birth and a lot of people kind of for nostalgic reasons or traditional reasons or whatever reasons are willing to connect mm. with the story of christmas being mm. about jesus birth what they're not willing to do then is is take that to the next level to recognize um the jesus of easter mm. and jesus teaching and his life and the implications that has for them and so for us as a church as as the church as god's people on earth the challenge has to be to make Easter as um, meaningful in people's lives and and the message of Easter as big as the message of Christmas because Christmas really is only there because of Easter in that sense. You know, it's, God sent Jesus into the world mm -hmm. um, to be its saviour. How do we get the world to recognise not just the baby in the manger, but to recognise the saviour. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge. I mean, some a of challenge. the clues are in yeah. that passage, aren't they, about living our lives in a mm -hmm. way that um, reflects back to God yeah. and is a good witness. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a... Yeah, you're right. It is a challenge because Christmas is the is the celebration, and everyone mm. kind of the whole world can kind of get on board with Christmas. Mm. But Easter's a little bit different, isn't it? You know, mm. the Easter is a a celebration for those that believe and have recognised mm. who Christ is for them, and the whole reason um, of Christ coming. Um, so, how do you yeah. how do you get the people that sing about the Saviour at Christmas to recognize to recognise the Saviour for themselves? Yeah. Going I forward. think they can see um, Christmas. They can take as a non-threatening story, as a little, mm. a nice little story of a baby born in a stable, mm. and and it can be. It we know that it wasn't as picturesque as it sounds, but it can be made into that nice little mm. story. Mm. Easter is a different thing, and Easter challenges you personally, mm. and is a much requires a much more personal response. I think mm. in some ways. Mm. So yeah, that's everyone, and that is actually kind of what we put as our first point for prayer isn't yep. it that mm. um that that jesus isn't forgotten post christmas yeah. you used the phrase about yeah jesus is for life not just for christmas yeah the, the old <laughs> the old car sticker for dogs a dog is for life not yeah. for christmas but i think you know equally jesus applies more so yeah. jesus is for life not, not just, just for, for christmas. christmas don't pack him away in and stick loft. him back up in the loft for yeah. another year because christmas yeah. is over you know we were saying that um, we've seen pretty much a five-fold increase for yeah. our carol service yeah. online um, than any other service we've put out. Yeah. Um, and it's why is that? Well over you know, a thousand views. Why have so many people yeah. watched uh, the Christmas story? Yeah. If only we could get that level of interest and and get people to consider Christ at other times, yeah. rather than just that one 
special time. It's um, I guess it's a challenge for the church. That the service is still there, so maybe you know people can go back to it. And yeah, stuff, yeah, and maybe yeah. it will. And this is the thing I think with the online presence, isn't it? This is a and this is a thing to be thankful to God for for a lot for this year that actually. If you look at something catches your eye and and you say, well, this was a good Christmas service. All our other services are there still for people to look at and go back and mm. explore if they feel they wish to. So mm. our prayers need to be that people take that yep. message that they've seen or heard and explore around it because mm. it is there in perhaps a way that it hasn't been accessible before. We just need people to connect with it. So let's pray. Yes. And the way we're going to do this is I think we're going to just pray over a series of of items and encourage you to um, there'll be moments to pause where for you to name people that you can think of or or situations. Um, but we'll kind of guide you through um, as we go. Um, and then at the end of each section, we'll use the words, Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. I'm going to invite you to join us. Uh, in those and then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer because at times we were saying this that you don't know when what to pray or or even how to pray but you know we've been given that the structure of the Lord's Prayer to guide our our thinking and our praying so when perhaps we feel this we don't know what to say where to start where to start the Lord's Prayer helps us with that so we'll use the Lord's Prayer as a way of rounding our prayer time off so let's pray together And Lord, we do want to begin by thanking you for the birth of your son at Christmas. We thank you for enabling us to take that message to the world, perhaps in new ways, perhaps in very, very different ways to what we've done in the past. But Lord, we thank you that your message has gone out. And Lord, we thank you um, for giving us the skills and the abilities to do um church in a new way but lord we pray that all would come to recognize jesus as their lord and savior and that the message of christmas would go far beyond christmas itself and lord we pray that you would help the church to to know how to respond to the challenge to spread god's word your word further afield that more people might come to know jesus as lord and savior of their lives too and we pray that jesus wouldn't just be forgotten that this story of god entering the world that you breaking into the world in a new way in a, in a way that was so unexpected lord that we pray that that wouldn't just get lost and packed away with the decorations when the trees come down and the tinsel comes down and the lights are taken down lord your message of salvation and hope to your world would shine forth so lord hear us lord graciously hear us and then we're going to um spend some time just remembering those who are affected by um covid and we'll leave a little gap so you can name people that are known to you or situations known to you Lord, we come before you and we remember those who are unwell. Those who have been bereaved. Those who are suffering long-term effects of COVID-19. those caring for all who are ill. Those who have lost jobs, businesses or homes due to COVID-19. Surround them all with your love. Comfort those who mourn and bring healing to those who are ill. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. And then we want to uh, 
continue to pray and we'll leave again some spaces for you to name people that you you know in these situations but we want to pray lord god for those on the front line um, against uh, covid at this time so we do want to pray for doctors and for nurses we want to pray for those serving in the police force Pray too for care workers. We remember all those teachers and all who work in schools and education. And finally, we pray for shop workers. Lord, we pray for all those who have put themselves onto the front line. Father, we thank you for their willingness to work in this way, for their willingness to provide services, to provide care, to offer support, to teach, to educate, to train, to provide services for us at this difficult time. Lord God, we pray for your blessing and your protection on each one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And then finally, we want to pray for all of those who have found Christmas really difficult for whatever reason. We are reminded that um, some people have had to evacuate their homes even on Christmas Day due to flooding. That many have not had the Christmas that they wanted or expected. And we pray for those who will also find the coming days and weeks equally as tough who are suffering the aftermath of flooding, who are worried about more issues to come, those who are worried about jobs and job security, those who are feeling isolated, those who have a sense of despair or who are feeling powerless those who are feeling hopeless lord as we look towards another year the beginning of a new year but perhaps not with the hope that we had originally hoped for we pray for all those for whom this time of year is really difficult for those for whom it has been made extra difficult this year and for those who just feel hopeless and despairing. Lord, we ask that you will shine your light into their lives, that they may turn to you and find in you a source of hope, a source of comfort, a source of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. And then together, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today for Midday Prayers. 
midday prayers are back again on Thursday and they will be hosted by uh, St Peter's. Mm -hmm. uh, you can join St Peter's tomorrow for um, refresh on a Wednesday at midday. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that's happening again tomorrow. Look out for that on the St Peter's Facebook page. And again, join us on Sundays um, at 10.30. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe both churches will be yeah. um, running services online. So, um, yeah. Come and find us and continue <laughs> to explore um, all that God can do for you. So there we go. Um, I think that's all we need to say. Yeah. Nothing else that I've missed? No, I can't think no? Of anything. Brilliant. No. Okay. So let me so close next with the... time we see you. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be New, new year. year. Yeah. No, no, well. it won't. Next Tuesday. Is it? Yes, it will. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Sunday's the third. It is. Yes. Yeah. yes. It will be New Year yeah. next time we see you. My wife's living in a time warp. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's close with a blessing and then uh, we wish you the best uh, for the week ahead. And a happy new year. And a happy new year in yeah. advance. There we go. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today. See you next year. Yeah, see you next year. <laughs>